After killing Lord Walder, Arya uses his face to impersonate him and hold a feast in honor of all of his sons. She gives a rousing speech, reminiscing, over House Frey's victories, before offering her audience a toast of poisoned wine. As Walder's many sons drink from their chalices, Arya refuses to let any of the women partake, aware of their innocence. She then elicits cheers from the many Frey sons upon the mention of the infamous Red Wedding, though then goes on to subtly mock them by reminding them of how they butchered a pregnant woman, cut the throat of a mother of five, and slaughtered the Starks after inviting them into their home. As the Frey sons begin to cough up blood from the poison, Arya watches with satisfaction as they all die before removing her mask and revealing herself. Before leaving, she asks Walder's wife, Kitty Frey, to tell anyone that might ask what happened that, the North remembers, and remarks that winter has come for House Frey. After departing from the twins, Arya comes across a small convoy of Lannister soldiers, one of which gains her attention with a sweet song. Arya agrees, upon request, to join them at their fire, and accepts their offerings of food and drink, though cautiously. She engages in some small talk with them, including the destruction of the Great Sept of Baelor, all the while keeping her eye on their swords, and states that she is heading for King's Landing. After she admits that she is planning on killing Queen Cersei, they laugh, unaware that this is her true intention. Arya later visits the inn at the crossroads where she overhears some patrons discussing the recent arrival of Daenerys Targaryen and her dragons. She is reunited with Hot Pie, who brings her several pies which she eagerly consumes. He reminds her of the destruction of the Sept of Baelor at the hands of Queen Cersei and informs her of his own encounter with Brienne. She offers to pay for her meal when she has finished, but Hot Pie refuses her coin as a friendly gesture. Upon learning that her half-brother John has taken back Winterfell from the Boltons and become the king in the north, Arya decides to finally head home after leaving the inn, instead of heading to King's Landing. On her way to Winterfell, Arya makes a small campfire in the woods. As she warms herself by the fire, she is suddenly ambushed by a large pack of wild wolves, which startles her horse. Surrounded, Arya pulls out Needle to defend herself, though the wolves do not attack, and Arya finds herself face to face with a now fully grown Nymeria, much to her astonishment. She pleads for her dire wolf to come with her to Winterfell, but Nymeria instead retreats with her pack back into the woods. Arya realizes that Nymeria is no longer the same and that she has also changed herself since they last saw each other. Softly, and with a small smile, she murmurs, that's not you, echoing what she said to her father years ago when he suggested that someday she would marry a powerful lord. Arya Stark finally returns to Winterfell. She rides up to the gates and dismounts, but the guards don't believe her when she identifies herself as Arya Stark, convinced that Arya has been dead for years. Arya asks that they send word to Maester Lewin and Roderick Castle, who can prove her identity, not knowing they are both dead. The guards brush her off, telling Arya there is nobody by those names at Winterfell. Arya asks for John, but they say he actually just left Winterfell, so Arya asks who is in charge of Winterfell. The guards respond, Lady Stark, who Arya realizes is her sister. They try to brush her aside, but she dodges them with her assassin's reflexes, and insists that one way or another she's getting in. She explains to them that if she is Arya, they'll be in a lot of trouble for stopping her, and if she isn't, she won't last long in Winterfell anyway. Mildly concerned, they agree to at least let her in the courtyard, but insist that she stay put while they send for Sansa so they can disprove her identity. As soon as they take their eyes off her, however, she slips away. The two guards go to inform Sansa and try to wave the incident aside as just some imposter, but she instantly realizes it must be Arya, and knows where she has gone. Sansa finds Arya where she expected, in the crypts looking over their father's grave. They are happy to see each other, but so much has happened to both of them in the past few years that they are at first awkward, unsure of what to say. Arya asks if she has to call Sansa, Lady Stark, now, to which Sansa firmly insists, yes, and then laughs. They smile and hug, though still a bit unsure. Arya notes that John left her in charge and smiles when Sansa says that she hopes John will be back soon. He will be so happy to see Arya, remembering how happy John was to see her when they were reunited, and the pair were never that close, unlike John and Arya. The sisters then look sadly on their father's grave statue. Arya says it doesn't really look like him. Sansa acknowledges that everyone who really knew his face is dead. Arya points out that they're not. Arya then asks if Sansa really killed Joffrey. 
Sansa explained she actually didn't, though she wished she had. Arya remarks that he was always at the top of her list. This confuses Sansa, and Arya explains that she'd been keeping a list of everyone she was going to kill, at which they both laugh. Finally, Sansa asks how Arya got back, but she only says her road wasn't a pleasant one. Sansa says hers wasn't either. They hug again, earnestly and warmly. Sansa then informs Arya that Bran is home too. Arya is elated, but her smile fades when Sansa does not mention Rickon, realizing that Rickon is dead. Sansa brings Arya to Bran in the Godswood, where he is lost in thought by the weirwood heart tree. Arya is saddened to see him paralyzed. Still somewhat detached even at the sight of Arya, Bran says he isn't surprised she's alive because he saw her at the crossroads. Arya is confused, and Sansa explains that Bran is having visions now. Bran says he thought Arya was going to King's Landing, and when Sansa asks why she would head there of all places, he again startles them both by saying it's because Cersei is on her list of names, which he can't possibly be aware of through normal means. Sansa asks who else is on her list, but she says most of them besides Cersei are actually dead already. They then remark on the Valyrian steel dagger in his lap, and he explains that Littlefinger gave it to him, thinking he'd want it. Despite it being such a horrible keepsake that nearly killed him and indirectly set off a chain of events leading to his parents' deaths, he is still listless and disinterested in it. Arya is confused as to why a common cutthroat would have a rare, priceless blade of Valyrian steel. Bran matter-of-factly says that someone very wealthy wanted him dead, and gave it to the assassin. Bran says that doesn't matter and hands it to Arya, saying she can have it because it's, wasted on a cripple. The three trueborn Stark children, finally reunited, proceed back to Winterfell's castle courtyard, with Arya pushing Bran in his wheelchair. Some time later, Brienne is going through a vigorous sword practice session with Podrick, knocking him down when he overextends himself. Impressed, Arya interrupts and says she'd like to spar with Brienne, the woman who beat the Hound in combat. Sansa and Littlefinger watch on silently from the walkway above. Brienne goes easy on her at first, but then Arya completely outmaneuvers Brienne using the water dance training she received from Sirio Forel, augmented by her training with the faceless men. Arya achieves many openings that would be a killing blow if she wanted them to be. Surprised that such a young girl is so skilled, Brienne stops holding back, leading to a grueling sparring session. Brienne actually manages to knock Needle out of Arya's hand but she simply switches to the Valyrian steel dagger she had in her belt. Arya uses her speed and agility to compensate for Brienne's strength and size to overwhelm her, until Brienne actually manages to bring her brute strength to bear on a fast-moving target by landing a kick on Arya's chest that sends her sprawling. Brienne stops for a moment as Arya lies motionless, shocked at what she has done to a noblewoman. However, Arya swings her legs around and jumps up, causing Brienne to grin in relief. Ultimately, they reach a stalemate, with each of them holding a blade at the other's throat. Arya takes her leave of Brienne, both mutually impressed, as Sansa looks down baffled at how her sister reached such a deadly skill level. Arya then looks up at the battlements, where Peter watched her duel with Brienne, giving him an untrustworthy stare until he walks away. Arya later watches in the Great Hall as Sansa addresses Lords Glover and Royce over their concerns with Jon's absence. Glover says that perhaps they should have chosen Sansa instead due to his feeling that the King in the North should stay in the North while Royce says that the Vale came to Sansa's aid during the battle for Winterfell. In response, Sansa kindly dismisses their notions, once again pledging her loyalty to Jon. In their late mother and father's chambers, Arya confronts Sansa about her apparent inaction towards Glover and Royce, claiming that she should have taken their heads for defying Jon's rule. Sansa reminds her sister that this would likely lose the support of both House Glover and the Vale and that they need to work together in order to survive. Arya is adamant that they should have been executed. Suspicious of Sansa and her relationship with Littlefinger, Arya begins to spy on him, following him to Sansa's bedchambers where he hides a rolled parchment inside of her mattress. Arya, unaware that the letter, written by Sansa after their father's imprisonment in the Red Keep in which she pledges her loyalty to Joffrey and the Crown and urges Rob to submit to his rule, has been planted on purpose by Baelish in order to manipulate her, falls for his scheme and reads the letter, growing suspicious of her sister as she is also unaware that Sansa was coerced into writing the letter by Cersei. From the shadows, Littlefinger watches with satisfaction as Arya leaves the room. 
Arya and Samza's relationship continues to grow increasingly strained following Arya's discovery of her sister's, incriminating, letter. Watching over the castle courtyard from the balcony, Arya reminisces about how their father used to watch her and her brothers train in the very same spot, bitterly claiming that Sansa wouldn't remember due to the fact that she was usually inside the castle knitting with her fellow ladies. She then tells Sansa how on one particular day, after their brothers had finished training with Sir Roderick, she wandered into the vacant courtyard and began practicing her archery with Bran's discarded bow as their father watched from above. Arya then resentfully states that he was killed by the Lannisters with Sansa's help, reading Sansa's letter to her aloud. Sansa insists that she was forced to write it and, being a naive child that she was at the time, was led to believe that she was saving her family. However, Arya is adamant to point out that had she been in Sansa's position, she would have died before betraying her family, calling her stupid for believing in the Lannisters' lies. Arya reveals that she, like Sansa, was present during their father's execution and that she saw the whole thing from the statue of Baelor. Arya surmises that Sansa is afraid she will show the letter to the northern lords, thus losing their respect. Taking advantage of the tension between the two sisters, Littlefinger later suggests to Sansa that she use Lady Brienne to protect her from Arya. In her bedchamber, Arya finds Sansa looking through her bag, which is full of her faces from Bravos. Confronting her sister, Arya toys with Sansa, insisting that they play the game of faces, hoping to catch her in a lie and expose her disloyalty to Jon. Sansa, unwilling to play, instead insists that Arya explain the nature of her faces. Arya reveals that with the faces, she can be whomever she wants to be. Grasping her Valyrian steel catspaw dagger, she approaches her sister in a somewhat threatening manner, wondering aloud what it might feel like to wear pretty silk dresses and be the Lady of Winterfell should she take Sansa's face. Arya then hands her the dagger and promptly heads out the door, leaving her sister visibly disturbed. Arya is summoned to the Great Hall for a meeting with her sister and sees Bran and Sansa seated at the head of the Great Table, with Littlefinger smirking in the crowd. Sansa proceeds to list a series of crimes against House Stark and directs them to Baelish, not Arya. Arya watches with satisfaction as Sansa and Bran turn the tables on Littlefinger and finally call him into account for his crimes, with Arya herself reminding Peter that her new Valyrian steel dagger originally belonged to him. When Baelish's attempts to manipulate the situation turn to pleading, Arya moves in and slits his throat with his own dagger at Sansa's direction. Later, Arya and Sansa discuss their pasts, Arya saying that she couldn't have survived what Sansa survived. Sansa says she thinks Arya could have, Arya being the strongest person she knows. They then discuss the execution and the survival of their house, finally reaching an accord to play to each other's strengths, like the wolves of their sigil, they will survive as a pack. 